How are you doing? I'm doing great. How's the con going so far? It's great. I mean, one day down, two more to go, and it's always awesome. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry, I'm just waking up. Um, That's okay. <laughs> it's, uh, it's the best show. This year, it's the only show I'm doing. Uh, I always kind of save myself for this show, you know, in terms of uh, catching up with friends and peers and fans. It's, it's unbeatable. It's the best. Now, at this show, you have a new book out, Bloodstrike. That's right. This is your first, uh, someone else's universe that you're working in, the toys you're playing with Rob Liefeld's universe. Yeah, I have the privilege of playing with Rob Liefeld's creations. Um, and it kind of started last year when I was like shopping for old comics, kind of filling my collection. And I started rereading all the extreme books. Um, and I fell, I fell in love again with Bloodstrike, except um, a few issues were missing in the publishing history. So I figured, oh, let me just plug those in and see if that works as a story to sort of reintroduce the characters to the world. And, uh, and so I pitched it to Rob and he let me do my Coper thing, where, you know, which is write, draw, color, and pretty much take over the entire package and deliver it as such. Um, and it's been fun, man. It's been great. It's I been awesome because, I mean, I, it's what I grew up reading. So I try to put my new sensibilities onto those older characters and I think it, I hope it worked. I hope it works for readers. Has he given you any direct feedback or just kind of a thumbs up and like, just go with it? Just go with it. And wow. the feedback has always been positive. He's That's like great. the best. He just let me go nuts That's on the awesome. characters. And it's know. great that you're able to do the writing art, mm -hmm. color, letters. Do you like to work that way? Is that more pressure for you or do you just prefer to be able to control no. the entire package the way it all comes out? Yeah, I'm a control freak line. like that. I got to do it. <laughs> I got to do it. It's also quicker production wise just not to not wait for things to be approved or, sure. or, you know, for something to clear. I just go for it. I just do it from my studio. And uh, that's how I've done Copra, which is my other, that's my main gig. That's my main title. Okay. Um, and it's sort of similar. It's like I write, draw, and color, and create this world of a sort of uh, adventurous misfits who go on weird missions, you know, inspired by all the comics I read as a kid, and current comics. I try to, you know, put in some 70s grindhouse stuff, and some 80s DC stuff, and some, you know, new European stuff. Just mix everything in, to, just to keep it fresh for myself, and hopefully for the reader. Um, and that's what I did for Bloodstrike, so. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Let me ask you some of the questions I'd like to ask all my guests to get to know more about you mm -hmm. as a creator. When you're not working on Cobra at Bloodstrike, what do you do for rest and relaxation? How do you relax? Just sleep, if I could. That's Sometimes all I do, that's man. the most precious thing you can possibly that's, have. Oh, relax. man, tell me about it. Uh, that's, I, I think that's what every cartoonist kind of yeah. does, you know? I mean, I, I try to step outside my room a couple times, you know? Because uh, I, li I live in my studio, pretty much. Um, in Brooklyn, New York. I'm from Brooklyn, okay. so um, I don't know. I try to go out, you know, have still have. I mean, I have a family too, so I hang out with them. That's like the most important part. They like to see you. They want to know. Yeah, once in a while, alive. just make sure I'm alive. Yeah, check yeah. yeah. In. So I check in with them. You know, we try to go on on trips. You know, road trips when we can. And where do you like to go? Well, we recently went to uh, Roswell, and that was fun. You we drove to... through Roswell, yeah, but oh, it was nice. a, it was a road trip, and we went to Albuquerque. Santa Fe, Roswell, Marfa, Texas. And then we ended up in Austin. So it was a, like a long road trip. So we kind of like to do that that's, stuff. We I've just, been to Santa Fe. That's, that's great. It's an awesome town. I mean, I personally like to go to comic stores and look, you know, see what they have for stuff. Yeah, you know? yeah. See what the what the it's scenes different. like, mm -hmm. uh, and eat, shop, go vintage shopping, go, you know, just hang out, just relax and decompress. So that's kind of what we do. Okay. When I'm not, that's what I do when I'm not working. Right. Away. Now, thinking back when you were growing up in your bedroom, you know, you're like 12 or so, what did you have on the walls? What kind of posters or I would expect probably some Rob Liefeld artwork, but what did, you, what did you have? I had, you know, I went through a period. I remember once I used to rip out the ads from DC Comics because I just didn't like ads. Okay. I just didn't, it just interrupted the story flow. I'm just a little kid ripping out the ads. But I still like the art because it was like house ads and it was like specific art made. Like a pinup. Yeah, it's yeah. like a cool pinup. So I never threw, threw them away. And I was amassing them. It was just a stack of ads from like 86, 87. And um, so I just put them on my wall and that's what I would have. And random, pin you know, it, later it became posters like wizard posters or mm -hmm. the posters they would sell at the comic store, you know, stuff like that, you know. Um, band posters, I don't know, all sorts of goofy stuff. What did you listen to? I would listen to stuff like uh, Faith No More, you know, early 
grunge, you mm-hmm. know, early. Well, to be honest, I was more of an MTV kid. Okay. And I treated that as the radio. So was MTV was always on. Yeah. So whether it was like Madonna or Run DMC or the Red Hot Chili Peppers, I just kind of absorbed it all. And I had favorites. I just never identified with a thing. I just kind of liked stuff. That's back when they played music on MTV. Yeah, when there was videos and it was it always was on. All the time. And that's what I would draw to. Okay. And uh, right. so if it wasn't like sitcoms, it would be MTV all the time, no matter what. You know, and then you develop a taste for like Headbangers Ball or, or 120 Minutes. And that's how I discovered bands. And then, it, you know, one thing led to another. And, but the staple was always MTV. That was always on. Okay. And uh, these days, it's pretty much just a YouTube or whatever CD I could rummage through, you know, through my old crates. <laughs> I'm still looking for a tape player because I have tons of tapes, but you that's another story. Player? I don't. Is they it, all break. Oh, man. I even had a Walkman, but it, that crapped out too. I still have one. One of the sports Walkman. The R- the oh, ones. I had the big yeah. yellow one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's exactly and it just started it slowing down. Yeah. And I hang on to that stuff because it's, I don't use it much, but I hang on to it just in case I need to dig out an old cassette. Because I have cassettes I made when I was a kid. Yeah, mixtapes. Talking tapes. to family. No, no oh, I, oh, I have that's... mixtapes for talking to family. Like, it's like it's like archival stuff now because these people are gone. They're no longer with oh, us. So man. I have these, and I at the time I was just thinking, oh, this will be fun. I'll play like I'm doing an interview, right? Yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah, like yeah. five years old, yeah, ten years yeah. old. So I hang on to those. I gotta, you knew what you wanted. I, I got I to gotta transfer <laughs> that stuff to digital. You have to, because those tapes, I know, they're gone, man. I know. Hey, birthdays. What was your favorite birthday? Something that you did during your birthday that you're like, wow, that was that's a great memory I have. Or maybe not so great, but okay, you don't birthday, forget it. <laughs> I try to do something cool every year. First of all, there, I went through a period where I just didn't want to celebrate it. I just didn't want to, you know, do anything. I can't fault you for that. You know, I just, yeah, I don't want to think about it, you know. Right, right. Uh, but oh, this last birthday, I went to, um, we went to Woodstock, and that was a cool little trip, so that was fun. You got all the cool places. We try, I don't know. It, it's never <laughs> enough, though. Great. It's never enough. Uh, when I was a kid, I don't know, just getting tons of comics and toys, that was always like, as long as I have that, you know, mm-hmm. whether it be birthday or Christmas, it's like, my parents knew what I liked, and I got that, so. So toys. Now, if you were a toy, an action figure, what should be your accessory? What would be my accessory? Uh, oh, that's a tough one. I'm trying to think of the toys that I had. It's something fun. And yeah. none of them none of them had accessories because I would break them off. <laughs> my Green Lantern is missing an arm. So it's like, <laughs> there's no accessory there. Um, oh man, that's tough. I don't know. Uh, the Ninja Turtles had weapons, mm-hmm. I guess. Mm-hmm. I don't know. One of those. <laughs> I really don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I used to actually play with my toys and throw them around and okay. burn them. And I think I lost all the WWF toys into the ocean. I mean, okay. it was rough. Ocean. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you're, on a, you're on a deserted island. It really helped me with transitions. People listen to the show know these are coming, so you're doing great. <laughs> you're on a desert island or a deserted island. Uh-huh. And it might have sand. It's a desert island. Uh-huh. What's the one book you want to have with you? For fun. I mean, it doesn't have to be a survival book. I mean, something you want to read for fun. Forever? Can, something to read? Yeah. Oh, man. This is the book you have. And I'll tell you what. It can be a collection. If you like a, a set of something that's all related, that's okay. You know what? I might take... I might take the big collection of Love and Rockets. Okay. Because that's my absolute favorite comic book ever. I mean, I have other comics that are up there, but if I'm going to be alone forever or for an extended time and I have one book to read, that thing, every time I reread it, it just gets better and better and better. And it makes me feel good about comics and about just life in general. I mean, Do you want something such... uplifting on an island? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's uh, good. Something that's going to give you a little bit of hope. You know, I mean, I, I get so locked into those guys' voices, the Hernandez brothers. Uh, it's two brothers. They do their own you know, respective worlds. They write and draw their own material. And they're both great. They're both brilliant. And they inspire, they've inspired. they inspired me since I first discovered them when I was a teenager. So definitely them. And I think they do have, like, a huge book that came out maybe 20 years ago. Okay, you could take it. It's like, like a yeah. brick. I mean, it's yeah. like I could maybe float on it if I had to. So. <laughs> What, sir, is your beverage of choice when you're resting and relaxing? It used to be coffee last month, but I haven't drank coffee in a month for some weird reason. I'm just trying to have too much caffeine. I think I overdid it because I was drinking coffee all the time. Uh But even when I'm relaxing, I like to drink coffee. Okay. Yeah, so it would be that. All right. Now I guess it's uh, water. (laughs) Got to stay hydrated, especially at the con. 
Oh my I, God, I carry yeah. everything with me because oh I know I'm not going to leave the I floor. need some water right now, seriously. I hear you. Well, so I don't get you parched and worn out. Final question. It's all good. What is the one question you want someone to ask you that you've never been asked before in an interview? Something you want people to know about you that you want to share? And then you're going to, oh man. <laughs> so, and then share. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Something you want to tell people. <laughs> okay, I don't, you know, that's a, that's a, man, that's a big one. That's a big one. I still got to wake up too. I, me too. It's okay. it's okay. You can ponder that and uh, come back. Maybe no, <laughs> may, no. Maybe maybe because I have this drawing, I'm working on commissions right mm -hmm. now. So maybe it's a technical related thing. And you know, I don't really get many people talking about um, like inking styles, like my approach to inking. You yeah. know, because I do everything. So we talk right. about color. We talk about layouts and writing. So, but inking specifically is a, a passion I have. I, I really maybe overthink it. And I try different things all the time. So just, uh, you know, I'd like to talk more about that, you know, in general, like craft, inking, like, why do you do what you do? Like, why do you approach it like that? Why do you ink the way you do? You know, so um, I'd love to talk about that. If anyone is in the con and wants to show up and do that, yeah. <laughs> that'd be great. Well, you know what? That sounds like a future show, thinking about inking. Yeah, so we, I, I'll have you on. It has a ring to it. But, yep, I'll have you on and we'll talk about inking. We'll focus on the inking because you've already answered my fun questions. I'll think of some more. I have some new ones, but I'll have you on. We'll talk about inking. Yeah, I look forward to that. Yeah, man. Let's do it.